Welcome back. Uh, we are discussing masks in Photoshop CC this week. Um, in the last video, we kind of talked about masking basics, how to add a mask, a couple of different ways on how to do that, and then how to use a mask. Let's very quickly review that uh, with a couple of images. Um, the masking is pretty basic, but uh, it's, it's important to understand how to use it. So let's say that we've got a photo. Here's a photo of a bird. Um, and we want to mask part of it out. What we do is we take our layer, make sure we have the right layer selected, and then we add a mask. Remember, you can add a mask either by using the Add Layer Mask button at the bottom of your Layers panel, or you can come up to Layer up at the top and create a mask through the Layer Mask option here. Now, this option we didn't necessarily use last time, but it is there. Um, there's two options here. Uh, well, there's technically three, two that we're going to use. There's Reveal All and then Hide All. Uh, if we click on Reveal All, it creates a white mask. Remember, white shows or reveals in this case. If we were to go to Layer, Layer Mask, and Hide All, it will create a mask that is completely filled with black, which is hiding the entirety of the image. If we were to paint now white in this mask, you can see that it added a little bit of white to our mask thumbnail there, but it will then start to selectively show part of that image. Let's delete our layer mask to get rid of it, and we will once again manually add a mask. Uh, so we could paint black. By the way, you can switch back and forth between your colors over here by uh, hitting the X key. It will switch back and forth between your foreground and background colors. Um, this is a way where we can just selectively paint out what we don't want to have in this layer. Now, you guys already know better uh, than the way that I'm doing it. You know that you could first get a selection and then add the mask. And if you have a selection when you add a mask, it will automatically mask out everything except for your selection. Um, but if sometimes there are cases where you need to manually zoom in and mask things out. Once again, we use masks instead of the uh, eraser tool because this is non-destructive. If I do mess up, if, like if I get rid of a little bit of the bird's tail, I can then switch uh, back to my color and paint part of the tail back in. Um, but if you're wanting a good selection, it's important to zoom way into the pixel layer. That way, and get a, a harder brush, right-clicking or two-finger clicking and adjusting the hardness of my brush, and you can manually mask part of your image out. If you want a perfect selection, there's really no better way to do it than to zoom into the pixel level and do it this way. Now, this, of course, does take some time, but this will ensure that you good, get a good selection or a good mask there. Now, I'm not going to force you guys to sit through and watch me mask that out, um, but that's just reviewing. You can add masks through the layer panel or through the layer menu up at the top. Black shows and then white hides, and if you were to paint instead of black or white but a shade of gray, the darker the shade of gray that you paint, the more that it hides, and the lighter the shade of gray that you paint, the more that it shows. Let's go a little bit more in depth with it. Uh, I'm gonna open up, we're gonna actually first create a blank document. We're gonna create an 11 by 17 inch document. Uh, now, let's do this wrong first. If I were to create an 11 by 17 inch document without changing this from pixels to inches, pixels are for anything designed for the web, Inches are for anything you're going to print. Um, I oftentimes have students that forget to change this from uh, pixels to inches, and this is what you get. Kind of tiny, huh? Not very big. And if I zoom in there and then create something, let's, uh, let's put a little black blob. There we go. You can see the pixels there. All those squares that we see are pixels. So let's instead, let's close this document, not save it. This time, we're going to create an 11 by 17, not inches. I'm sorry, not pixels but inches instead. So manually type it in there. 300 is the resolution for print. Anytime you're printing something, you wanna make sure your resolution is at least 300. That's how many pixels there are in a square inch. And we'll say create, and this will give us our blank document. Uh, we're gonna add a couple pictures to this one. We'll add this young lady. I'm just dragging and dropping some files here. Uh, this, if you ever add a, a raw file, you'll notice that this is not a JPEG. This ends in .cr2. That means it's a, a raw photo shot by a DSLR camera. Um, this one is Canon's raw file format. Um, it will pop this up. This is uh, Adobe Camera Raw. 
Kim Raw 11.2. It's part of Photoshop. It's built into it. It's We will talk more about it later, but it's a great way to edit photos. And anytime you automatically add a raw file or try to bring a raw file into Photoshop, it will open up Adobe Camera Raw. And we're going to adjust this to take up the entirety of our document. We'll move it over a little bit. And let's go to another one. This one's also a raw file. It ends in .cr2. We're going to drag and drop it in there. We could adjust it here if we want to. I'm not sure we need to do too much adjusting. We'll just make some quick adjustments there. We'll say OK, and then it will add it into our document as well. These are both being added as smart objects. I don't think we've talked about smart objects yet, but we will soon enough. We'll resize this. We don't really need to know too much about them yet. Um, all right, so we're going to uh, take our background layer, and above it, we're going to add a new layer. We're going to add a solid color layer. You can probably guess the color. Uh, since we're making something along the lines of a movie poster, we want it to be a dark, maybe horror movie-esque poster. So I'm just going to fill it with black. So now beneath the layers of our two subjects, we have a layer that's just black. In our background layer, we could have done that, but I like working in layers. So it's still there. It's just a white background layer. Above it, we have our color fill layer. Then we have Savannah, and then we have gray. Okay, so I'm going to move gray over a little bit. We'll have him kind of right there. We can move Savannah over a little bit, and we'll have her right there. Now, the troublesome part about this is this layer with gray is covering up that part of Savannah's face, and I want to be able to see both of them. So this is where masking comes in. I'm going to add a layer mask to the layer with gray. I'm going to go to my brush tool, and what I want to do is I want to hide uh, the, that part of the layer so that I can see through underneath it to the layer that's below it, which has uh, the girl in it. So I'm going to go to my brush tool. I'm going to, oh, by the way, if you ever don't have your foreground and background color set to black and white, hit the D key on your keyboard, and it will automatically switch it to black and white. Then you can hit X to cycle back and forth. Uh, so I'm going to make sure I'm painting black. I'm going to get a larger brush. I might say not quite that large, but pretty big. This should be good, about 1,400 pixels, and it's going to be soft. That means the edges are going to be feathered. So now if I click and I'm make, making sure that I'm in the mask, and start painting, it hides that part of the layer and allows us to see through to the other layer. And if I were to resize this, click and stretch, it resizes both the mask and the, uh, the actual image at the same time. So I'm just transforming this layer, making it a little bit bigger. If I wanted to fade it out a little bit more, I could just continue to paint black. Now, if I paint out too much, I can switch back to white to paint part of the layer back in. Now, let's add a mask to Savannah. Maybe we want to add some text at the bottom, resize that to make it a little bit bigger, maybe move her up just some. And then we've got that line down there, and it's just a little bit distracting. So we'll just add a mask. Um, we could use our brush tool, but this time let's do something different. I'm going to go to my gradient tool. So it adds gradients. We'll talk more about gradients later on. Um, but right now, all we need to know is what black does and what white does. Right now, I have a white to nothing um, gradient, which won't really adjust my mask because my mask is already completely white. Uh, if I change this to a black, if I change my foreground color to black, my gradient automatically changes to a black to transparency or black to nothing gradient. So if I were to click and drag, I'm just dragging straight up, it fades the image out. Same thing, if I thought that the background or the right part of this image was distracting, we can just add a mask to it to kind of fade it out. We could transform it again to make it a little bit larger, and it just kind of fades out there. Then we could add some text down to the bottom if we wanted to. I'm not sure what this movie's called. Uh, we could very quickly call it something, though. Um, uh, we'll just call it Don't Answer. And we'll make that a little larger. Normally, it's a good idea to change the uh, size of your text only through the options bar, but we're not worried about that right now. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's drop a texture on it, and we'll call that done. This texture will be acting as somewhat of a review for us. Ooh, that texture fit perfectly, perfectly 11 by 17. Uh, we'll make this kind of like a 70s um, horror movie poster, so I'm going to change the blending mode of that. We'll cycle through these. Lighten works pretty well. Screen works even better. I'm going to set it to screen, knock the opacity down slightly, and there we have it, our horror movie poster. Um, I don't like the color of the text, so I'm just going to 
Uh, click it, select my type tool, make sure that it's selected and we're just gonna change it to just barely off white. Um, there we go. So that's our um, little bit of a review on masking. Let's close that out. We're not gonna save it. And let's talk about compositing. Okay, so compositing is when you blend multiple images together. Um, I'm going to, let's open up this picture. I'm just gonna drag it and drop it into Photoshop. Um, and let's open up another picture a different way. So I'm gonna go to File, Open, not that way. Whoops, sorry guys. Uh, make sure you're in Photoshop. File, Open. I'm gonna go to where we have our files, right over here. And we're going to go to this file that I already uh, messed around with earlier. Um, so we already know that if you have a selection and you hit the mask button, it masks out everything but your selection. Um, so if I'm trying to create a composite, like let's say I wanted to drop this kid in a different background, I would first need to select him. And I could click and drag around in order to get a good selection, but that would take some time, so I'm not going to make you guys sit and watch me do that, so I've already done it before, so I'm going to go to select and then load selection. Selections are stored under channels, so I'll just pull up that channel and say OK. Uh, if I wait a moment, it'll pull up the selection that I've already made. Now, if you have a selection, if you hit the mask button, it gets rid of everything except for your selection. I could then take this selection uh, and I could either duplicate it into that other layer. Let's do it that way. Um, duplicate layer. And then it says, where do you want it to go? We're going to select that other document, green forest wallpapers, and we'll say OK. Now if I go back to this one, there we have it. This young man right there, we're going to composite him into this image. Um, we are resizing it to transform it. Stretching it out a little bit. We'll make him a little bit smaller. Just make it look like he's walking along this path. We're actually going to flip him horizontally. Make him smaller still. There we go. So if we were creating this composite, we'd probably need to do a couple things first. We need to match the colors, match the light. Um, if he were in a spot where there was uh, direct light, he would be casting a shadow. In this case, he's, he's really not. Um, but I would probably apply a hue saturation layer, make it a clipping mask like we've talked about before, so that it now only adjusts the layer beneath it. Um, I would say this picture has a lot of greens, so I'm going to select the greens and pull up the saturation on the greens. That adds a little bit of green uh, to the picture with him in it. We could also just drag this around in general and make it just kind of a little bit more green. Um, and then if you're ever creating a composite, the key to making a composite look successful is to stack adjustment layers on top of both. When you do that, and I stacked a color adjustment layer here, or a color balance adjustment layer, um, what it does is it adds a color change to both, or to all of the layers beneath it. So if I'm doing this, I'm adjusting these colors into both the layer with the boy and the background, and that allows your composite to look a little bit more natural because they, they share more of the same general colors. We'll throw a photo filter one on there, We'll throw a curves adjustment. We, maybe we can brighten everything, adjust the black point, adjust the white point, and it just makes everything look a lot more realistic. Let's close this out and we'll open up another one. File, open, or we could drag and drop. This time we're gonna go to the desert. Um, let's see, do I have another picture we could select something from? Oh well. We'll use this one. Okay. Uh, we've got that kid again right here. We're, this time we are going to drag him into this other layer, size him down. Also size down the layer here. We'll put him over there just like he's walking around. Now this one, if we were creating it, it probably would need, because it does have a little bit more light on it, it would need to have, I'm trying to find a good spot. He looks not super composited. Um, would need to have some shadows to it. So here's a fun way to add shadows. I'm going to duplicate the layer that has our, our subject in it. I'm going to flip it vertically so that it matches up. Drag him down. We'll stretch it out a little bit because the sunlight's a little bit long there. I'm just making sure his feet match up. 
And we could stretch it out to the left and to the right a little bit too if we wanted to. But I'm not super concerned with that. Okay. Uh, it looks weird right now, right? Um, if I go to my layer styles down here at the bottom and select color overlay, we're just going to overlay it with black. That's exactly what I want. And we can knock down the opacity of this layer. And we can start to see that we're getting a little bit of a shadow uh, feature. I would need to drag it underneath. Uh, it was on top of that layer, but we dragged it underneath. We can zoom in. We can tell where it's messed up a little bit. Let's go back in our mask, paint out that part where you want it to go away. We just need to paint black and that part goes away. Once again, white will show, black will hide. This is not perfect, but it's getting there. We're doing this pretty quickly. Um, shadows are normally a little bit softer too, so if I were actually doing this, I would probably apply the layer mask, um, and I would, I would run a Gaussian blur filter on it, but I'm not gonna make this perfect right now. Um, but our last step, as always, is to stack a couple of adjustment layers on top of everything. And when you do that, you'll notice that I just dragged, I'm in the midtones. I am using a color balance adjustment layer. Um, and I, I added a little bit of reds to it. I pushed everything to the reds. And when I did that, it made the desert uh, layer a little bit more red. But it also applied the same adjustment to the boy, and it also applied the same adjustment to the shadows. Um, so that's the reason you stack adjustment layers. It just makes things look a lot more realistic in the end. And it's normally a good idea if you're doing this one to go through all three and make the same adjustments. Normally each picture has its own colors that work best with it. It's all gonna be different for each and every image though. Um, we'll stack another curves adjustment layer on it. Adjust the white point, adjust the black point. If we, if we thought that he was just too um, dark though or too bright, we would need to create another adjustment layer and clip it to the other one by creating a clipping mask. Now, uh, because of this arrow, we're only adjusting the layer that's directly underneath it. So we can make him brighter or we can make him darker uh, depending on what we want to do. Or we could adjust the black point or the white point of him. And every time you make a composite, which is what you're doing right now, uh, it does take a while. This is a complicated photographic process. Um, but, you know... All it is is masking, blending modes, transforming, and adjustments, stuff we've already really covered. Um, but the more you use it, the better you're going to be at creating composited images. Um, let's, let's. Okay, um, one more thing. We are going to talk about one more way of masking, and that's selecting and masking. Um, so here we have a woman. I'm going to just duplicate my layer and unview my background layer. I hit Control J uh, to duplicate it. I'm going to make sure I'm in this layer. First, I want to make sure I get a good selection. I'm using the quick selection tool um, because it looks like this background has a slight color gradient in there that I'm afraid of. And I'm just using this to click and drag around my subject in order to get a good selection. Clicking and dragging, getting a good selection. Zooming in a little bit. Not sure exactly what she's holding. We're going to assume it's a, a laser pointer, but I'm not really sure. Uh, once again, Alt will remove from a selection. Shift will add. Does not have to be perfect, but um, you know we'll get as close as we can at first. I'll show you why it doesn't have to be perfect, though. Um, and when I say it doesn't have to be perfect, I'm mostly thinking about her hair. Okay, so we're starting off. I'm holding Alt and selecting all of the backdrop because we really only want our subject in this case. All right. I'm checking to make sure that we've got everything that we need and that we don't have anything extra. Shift selecting will add to your selection. Alt selecting will remove things. Okay, not perfect, but close enough. So we've got our selection. Um, I'm going to, we'll add a mask, layer, layer mask, and what we're going to say, reveal selection. That gets rid of everything else. So now we just have our selection that's right there. But if we zoom in on her hair, we can tell that it's not perfect. Um, this is why masking is, is just so great. I'm gonna come up here to the select menu and I'm gonna go about halfway down to where it says select and mask. Uh, when you do that, yours will normally look a little bit more like this. 
uh, where it says onion skin, where it makes the, the actual background or what you don't have selected slightly transparent. Um, I like to change it to black and white because I feel like I get a better view of my selection there. Um, once again, we're, we're doing this to create a composite. Um, whoops, let's go back over here. Uh, so we have tools on the left. These are different than our normal tools. Uh, you can actually create a selection completely in this dialog or this feature if you wanted to. I like starting with my own selection and my own mask and then going into select and mask, but you know, you do you. I'm going to go to the refine edge brush tool. What this does is it allows you to tell Photoshop which part of your mask is messed up and then have Photoshop re-examine it. Normally it's going to be hair. Uh, so I've got the refine edge brush tool selected and I'm just going to paint over the parts of my mask that are not working for me. And when I do this, I'm telling Photoshop, Hey, uh, this part's not so good. Please try again. And you can tell that Photoshop, wherever I paint over, it's pulling up more detail in that area. Now it never does like a perfect job, but it always does pretty close. I normally like to pull up contrast as well and maybe shift the edge just a little bit too. Um, you can try the edge detection settings too. I, you know, the, the, with each release, Photoshop gets better at doing this. Still don't think it's really perfect, but it is It is a fun feature um, to have. We can check that pen. Nope, that's getting rid of things. Let's undo that part with Command or Control Z. Now if we hit OK, uh, we can kind of zoom in there and see just what we've got. You can see that some of our hair is a little bit transparent. That's what I meant when I said it's not perfect. We could paint white where we want to be able to see her hair again. Um, but yeah, let's say that we wanted to put a new background uh, on in this layer. Let's go here. Let's type in classroom. And we're just going to put her in a classroom. We're going to make sure that we get large size images. That should be second nature to you guys by now. Um, and we're just going to put her in some classroom. Try to find one where it looks like she'll fit in. One where the perspective doesn't look too off. Let's just go with this one for now. Open image in a new tab. Yeah, good image. We'll copy it. We'll go back to Photoshop. We'll paste it. Uh, now, of course, it's on top of her now. I'm going to resize it so that it fits. I'm making sure not to distort it. Uh, we need her to be on top. So I'm going to drag the layer featuring the teacher on top, move her over a little bit, make her just a wee little bit larger. Um, and then in order for this to look a little bit more realistic, we would need to stack some adjustment layers, but let's let's uh, let's adjust her first. So by default, this will affect both the background and my subject. But if I were to right click it and click on Create Clipping Mask, you'll notice that it now just adjusts uh, the girl there. So we could add a little bit more contrast to it with curves. Um, we could maybe even uh, adjust some of the colors on it a little bit. Let's make that a clipping mask too. So she becomes just a little bit more colorful. And then you always want to end every everyone when you're doing this by stacking just uh, adjustment layers on top. And once again, when you do that, it adjusts the colors of both your background and of your subject. And it makes your, uh, your composites just all the more realistic. That one's a little bit much. But here we go. We switched the background for this lady. We dropped her into a new background. Now this one, because of the way that it's, it's set up, we didn't have to add in a shadow or anything crazy like that. We just selected her, added a mask. We use the select and mask dialog box to fine tune our mask to make her hair a lot uh, more selected. And then we dropped in a new background and we added in uh, some adjustment layers, some that are clipped to her, some that affect both in order to make it look like a more realistic um, composite there. When I save this, Save it as a JPEG because we're done. If I wasn't done with this, I would save it as a PSD, aka a Photoshop document. Because I am done, I'm going to choose JPEG, uh, and we'll just say this, uh, teacher in school, and say OK. Make sure our size is set to 12. And there we have it. That's all this week for masking. We talked a lot about compositing. We talked about layer mask basics. Um, and then we also talked about uh, the select and mask dialog box, and then how you can use masks to blend in multiple pictures together. Uh, that is it for this.